We report on it all the time. Maine has a housing, housing crisis. There is unquestionably a shortage of housing for lower income people, but the problem has now come to affect just about every part of Maine. 207 Don Kerrigan is here with a look at parts of the problem, which is affecting so many parts of life in this state. Yeah, right? it sure is, it's, and, and, and there's a lot to it. We did a story a couple of weeks ago about the Washburn and Dowdy shipyard in Booth Bay, which built big steel tugboats. Right. And like so many other businesses in Maine, they have problems getting enough workers. They've even had to bring in contract workers from other countries to fill in uh, while they try to hire them. And the president of the company said one of the biggest problems they face is a lack of housing for workers. The problem, as Rob said, is everywhere, and there are many reasons. It was an event a year in the making as the governor announced new money to build new housing. The biggest impediment to our economic growth is the lack of affordable housing for our growing workforce. Six projects using $17.5 million in state funding to build 105 new rental units. 105 seems a lot of new housing, perhaps, until you understand the need. We need about 80,000 units by 2030 uh, in order to meet the need. Dan Brennan is director of Maine Housing, the Maine State Housing Authority. So by 2030, we need 80,000 units. That is all, um, that includes both low income, moderate income, market rate, higher end. That is across the entire state. Maine has a real housing problem. There is simply not enough available and affordable housing in the places where people want to live and work. And much of what we do have has become way too expensive. Dan Brennan says for the subsidized apartment projects they build, the 2020 pandemic changed everything. We were, we were building in an environment where we could do a multi-family unit and a 30-unit apartment building. We could do uh, we could do a, a pro project for 150 to 175 thousand per unit. Now that's 325 thousand dollars per unit. It's the cost of materials. It's the cost of um, just the supply chain issues that have come up. Just overall inflation has I mean, gone. That's, a, that's an astounding increase. It is in a very short period of time. And Mainers incomes clearly have not kept up with the cost of housing. The statewide median home price is now about $360,000, but much higher in more prosperous counties. At the same time, rents have skyrocketed as well. Dan Brennan says Maine housing has nearly tripled the number of subsidized apartments it's building, but that alone can't fix the problem. And we really need the private market to be able to get uh, to uh, the level that we're going to need to. What we're dealing with is a supply and demand problem. In Brunswick, Dave Holden is trying building this apartment project called the Sandpiper at Brunswick Landing. We call this a one bed plus den. Okay. You know, this being the den. And in this here. would be what, like 15, 1800? 1800, you okay. know, in that kind of range, 1800 yeah. to 2000. It's 63 units, with around 20 having reduced rents under the town's affordable housing requirements, with a tax incentive to make that feasible. We're targeting the middle of the income spectrum the teachers, the policemen, the firemen who are making forty to eighty thousand dollars a year. Holden says they're using pre-built wall sections to speed up the work and reduce labor costs, but also using heat pumps and other green energy features to entice renters. And he says developers could build a lot more housing if towns and cities would let them. He blames costly and restrictive local zoning that blocks bigger projects. And I like to say it's illegal to build housing because you know there's height limits and, and there's density limits and there's setbacks and there's all these zoning restrictions both in Portland and I, I should stop picking on them because <laughs> almost every other town. And even this project he says would have been bigger, 100 units, if the town had allowed it. Brunswick did a great job helping us get this done, but there are density limits. This is a 24 unit per acre zone and I wish there was no limit. Why are we limiting density in the height of a housing crisis. And what about building new affordable single family housing? There was a time when Maine built a lot of it. Starter homes, they used to be called. We were told it's become very hard to do. It is not as profitable for a developer to build a cape, you know, for maybe their cost is 300,000 and they might only sell it for 
350 and there's some fees in there and when you're all done you're spending six months to earn ten thousand dollars a profit it has become uh, dramatically more difficult to make the numbers work for a small single family subdivision so one of the investments that the state government is making in Maine housing is to do just that giving us subsidy funds uh, it's an area that's desperately needed he says there should also be newfound respect for manufactured housing mobile homes double wives even small modular homes that can be much more affordable. And the quality manufactured housing, if you go check it out, is very good right now and, and, and has only been uh, increasing. All had a hard time hiring workers because employees can't find affordable housing. More state funding for low and middle income housing is in the pipeline. Meanwhile, Dave Holden says the Sandpiper Apartments will open this summer. Mainers needing places to live and businesses needing people to work all hope a lot more will be coming. And as you can tell, there are lots of different pieces to this issue. Uh, the good news perhaps is th that many people and communities and businesses and government all get it and are all trying to work together to find some ways and some steps they can take to make it better. But it's not going to be easy, Rob. The, w among the many simple facts of this is, I'll give an example of my own life. I bought my first house in like 1983 for $35,000. My annual salary at that time was just a couple thousand less. I looked on real estate sites yesterday and they value that same house at $300,000. Uh, let's just say my income has not increased anywhere near that. You and I can remember there used to be a general rule which was don't spend more than twice your household income on your house. Right. So now, you know, household income in Maine typically may be around sixty, seventy thousand mm -hmm. dollars So that's a house of $120,000 to $140,000. Well, good luck finding that yeah. in York County, Cumberland, Sagadahawk, Hancock, and on and on and on. Right. It's a huge problem.